Welcome back everyone to another Kerbal Space Program video. So today we have something a little bit different for you from the last few. Uh, we are actually going into space today, sort of. <laughs> and uh, anyways, this is our air launcher vehicle. It is actually not the fighter plane that it looks like. Uh, but basically what this is designed to do is a fairly simple concept. Is to take a satellite into space and be able to do that without the use of any rocket engines and also having a completely reusable vehicle here for launching and so on the inside here we have our satellite and so this is the actual satellite section right here uh, ending at the ion engine of course you've got your batteries your antenna and then also our solar panels just to keep it going and then this is really the only stage here uh, that's gonna be wasted uh, it's just the one that gets us into orbit around Earth because the fighter plane is not actually enough to accomplish that. So we have this engine here and uh, then fuel tanks for that and then our RCS uh, right there which you can barely see. I can't really get the camera to do what I want it to right now. But basically that will help us to separate away from the aircraft. And the cool thing about this is like I said this section right here throughout the entire procedure is the only thing that gets thrown away so this kind of launching sequence for a satellite is extremely efficient as far as uh, you know money goes and uh, honestly I have to admit it's more of a real-life concept than one that's going to be useful in Kerbal Space Program simply because of the fact that uh, you cannot pilot two things at once and so once we separate the satellite and we start putting it into orbit this whole ship will sadly crash so that's the sad fact of it you can't get the satellite into orbit and pilot this thing back down safely so you will honestly be wasting this but anyways the concept is cool and uh, is one that works well in real life which probably counts more than Kerbal Space Program anyway so we'll keep going with it and I think in the end it's probably going to be honestly cheaper than uh, using a rocket because you're still using fewer parts and uh, you're also not using any rocket fuel at all. We're using entirely air breathing engines here using some of the same features I showed you in the last video just having multiple intakes and of course you want these engine coolers every time you're going to be going at high altitudes attached to ramjets makes them extremely efficient to where you can get up uh, burning around 25 to 26,000 uh, meters and uh, so anyways we'll get on with it and so launch on up. and of course the launching part of this is probably the most important because how you do it is going to really determine how effective uh, your craft is at getting something into space I'm going to talk about that in a little bit I tried just going kind of vertical one time, uh, but you get a lot less altitude uh, when you do that. So uh, what you want to do is you want to gain a lot of speed, uh, of course not so much that you start burning up, and then pull up. As you gain more and more speed, you can start to slowly increase the vertical speed. You don't want to do it all at once because then if you do that, you're going to have a lot of air resistance coming at this since you're still going to be going forward, but you just change your direction to go up, but you're going to be creating a lot of drag and instantly cancel out a lot of your speed, uh, and not even mentioning the fact that it puts a ton of stress on your aircraft, and if you do it too violently, you might even wind up destroying it. So. Ideally, you want to be hitting over 1,000 meters per second right when you get around the uh, 10,000 meters range. And then you can start to get more aggressive with the climb. So we're going to 1,100 right now. I'm going to go ahead and pull 
it up a little bit. And we'll be exiting the atmosphere at about 55 to 60 degrees. That gives us enough boost to where we don't die out too quickly, but also makes our suborbital trajectory about as high as possible. Or at least the highest results I've gotten so far, anyway. And there we go, we're cutting out at 26,000, and our apoapsis is at 55. So not as good as some of the other trials I've had, honestly. I've gotten it up to 65,000 before, but it should still be completely doable. So at this point, we'll go ahead and start separation. I'll wait to about 40,000, just so we're out of most of the atmosphere. And one very important thing here is you want to be controlling from the satellite so you don't keep controlling the aircraft and this whole thing winds up being pointless. So having done that, turn the RCS on and then we will begin our separation from the craft there. So with the separation complete, go ahead and point this at the Oh, I forget what that's called. Prograde. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and ignite it now, um, just so that we set our apoapsis higher. So I want to get that completely out of the atmosphere. And 90,000 meters should be fine. So now once we reach that, we'll do our orbit burn. And there goes our aircraft. So sad you have to waste it. But, oh well. That's why I had it piloted by a drone and there's no Kerbals harmed in the making of this video, unfortunately. Uh, but... That does mean that, you know, if you make it drone piloting in a campaign, uh, that you're not going to be losing your Kerbal pilots in these launchings. You only crash the aircraft. So basically it becomes like a rocket stage. And there we go. We have our stable orbit. So that puts us in complete orbit around Kerbin. We have our fully functioning satellite now. We can go ahead and deploy the solar panels. But of course the cool thing about this is, like I say, you get satellite up for very cheap. All you have to do is send your aircraft up, you burn very little fuel in the process, and then, of course, if you actually had a pilot who could take it back down, then you wouldn't lose anything really, except for this section here, uh, which is extremely efficient in comparison to a rocket launch. So what you can see me warping towards right now is I've actually set it up on a uh, intercept trajectory with the moon, just to give you an idea of what this thing is also capable of. Now, now usually you'd be starting your burn around 6 seconds because our burn time is 12 seconds, uh, but we're going to start a little bit early. I'm probably going to start at about 30 seconds uh, before we hit our node. That is because we have very little fuel left on our stage here. And so the ion engine is going to take over from that point, but of course it has much lower thrust, so we're going to need more time to burn it. So we'll go ahead and start the main burn here. And now we're done with that, so we have to go on to the ion. And that has increased our time to about two minutes. I don't know what the sound of that explosion was. That was weird. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. So something randomly exploded. And I have no idea what that was about. Well, we are heading towards the moon now. We'll be there very soon. And there we go. Now all we need to do is 
Let's go ahead and set up a node here, and we'll get that to a nice low moon orbit. So the cool things about this too is, I mean, if you had a little bit of a larger cargo bay um, and modify things a bit, you could even send up probes to the moon, to where you could land on the moon and everything, all without the use of any rockets, which is really cool. So now we have an orbit around the moon, but we want to get it more circular. Oh. We are out of electricity. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do maneuvers on the dark side of the moon. So that is the one flaw in my plan right now. Where is the sun? I guess it's behind there. Ah, uh, great. There we go. Okay. So now we just wait until we get back to our periaps, and then we'll do it again. Okay. So, take two. So, just note, I suppose, uh, you probably want to only do something like this in the time of the month where the moon or wherever you're maneuver anyways uh, just get yourself to where you're not gonna be maneuvering in the dark that would be immensely helpful to you so that you don't run out of ion propulsion when it's most needed but anyways looks like we have enough based on just that one pass by the Sun there and 40, there we go, and we could even this out a bit more if we wanted to by going to the periaps and all that, but I'm going to take it, we have 50 on this side and 35 on that one. So now we have a orbit around the moon, and of course the last, uh, we'll get this in the sun where you can see the satellite a little bit better. And of course the last step for our satellite is to actually deploy its communication equipment. And now there we go. One fully functioning satellite orbiting around the moon without the use of rockets. So the last thing I want to demonstrate to you guys is just basically the re-entry capabilities of this aircraft. Uh, we've already deployed our satellite, we're falling back down to the planet below, and of course this is basically what it would look like if we could pilot the aircraft after we release our satellite. Some of the features about this aircraft too, um, with canards I've always found them to be the key to a successful re-entry. I found them to be much more effective than putting fins back here. Um, and uh, now with a fighter aircraft why well, you would want to keep it closer to the nose in order to get a lot more maneuverability out of that here you actually want to keep it much closer to your center of mass which is right around here that's going to make your pitching much less effective which is actually a very good thing since you're re-entering at very high speeds and therefore you don't want any aggressive maneuvering so the uh the slower your pitching is uh, the better and smoother your re-entry is going to be. And so we're starting to hit the atmosphere right now. And I'm not really going to worry too much about slowing this thing down. We'll let the uh, natural drag of the atmosphere against the aircraft take care of that for us. But we're keeping it pitched a little bit above our uh, angle of attack there. So that uh, should help to slow us down pretty effectively. it up a little bit just to help out with that slowing down and you still have to be careful even with canards being closer to the center of mass 
because if you do it too quickly, then of course you're going to break apart. And there we go. down to normal speeds and uh, from this point as you can see we've got a ton of fuel left so we can do pretty much whatever we want at this point I mean you could go for a fun flight <laughs> or you can you know, turn around and go back home which we're not really all that far from because we took off right there and we're over here which is only that much of a distance and we certainly have plenty of fuel to be able to accomplish that So that gives you the ability to have an aircraft, uh, you know, obviously there's the economic advantages, also just the fact that uh, you can get something up very quickly. Um, of course, a Kerbal Space Program, again, is not as much of a concern, but with an aircraft versus a rocket requires a lot less setup. All you have to do is slap in a satellite in the cargo bay, and then you can take on off. And uh, also, you know, with its reusability, you just go back home, you pick up a new satellite, then you go back up. And it's very simple. Um, I know in real life they're already experimenting with these and they've had some success. Uh, but here in Kerbal Space Program, it's uh, something I don't see done too often. I know it's been done before. But, uh... Anyways, interesting concept for you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Again, if you like, leave comment, rate, subscribe, etc. Um, and if you have any other ideas, let me know, and I'll try it out. And see you guys later.